Hello everyone, Sen here. Today we're going to be following up with our series on how to make a top-down game in SGL3. And so, as I said on last episode, we're going to be drawing a character into the screen. And to do that, the first thing we need is a character to draw. And we're going to be downloading no noting from here. Um, this is Olobster's HIO Adventure Pack. This is an asset pack that we are going to be using throughout the series. And I'm going to be leaving the link to his HIO page in the description and the download link too. So we are going to download it from here. Let's click here. No thanks. And we click download. After download, we are going to come here. This is going to be in the description as well. This is the SDL image library. And um, we're going to be needing SEL image to load images into our program and to use them in our render. So we want to download SEL3, uh, SEL image 3 instead of SEL image uh, 2.0. This is the, la the latest uh, release, but we also have this one here, the um, stable ABI preview. Since we're using SDL3, we might as well use SDL image 3 too. So to download it, we can just come here and download SDL3 image devil mink w. This is the one we're gonna be using. So after you download those two things, what we need to do is go into our MCC installation. If you remember from the first tutorial, uh mine was in my disk C and then into MC64. This is my MC installation. And what we're going to do is open the SL3 image developer lib. And we're going to open it. Here we have um, the 32 bit version and the 64 bit version. And you have to choose the same one you choose. Um, you chose on the first tutorial. In my case, that was 64 bit. And now we need to copy all of this inside of the UCRT folder. So we can just drag everything from here and put it on here. It says that if you want to replace, that's because I already have those files. So I'm going to skip. But what we're doing is um, making sure that the SDL3 image header file is available to us in Visual Studio. So Visual Studio Code. So now that we have that, um, we all are also going to copy the contents of the asset pack that we downloaded into our project folder. We are done with this, so we can just go into VS Code. And we are going to uh, create a new folder called Assets. And we can just rebuild it into the File Explorer like this. And we can copy all of the contents here. As you can see here in the folder, we have uh, sprites and tiles, and this is the things we're going to be using for the for our game. If you are making your own game with your own textures, this is the moment to change what I do, and you can start using yours. So now that we have all of that, we can come into our SDL file, our main C. And if you remember what we had on last episode, was just a simple window with a green background and what we want to do in this uh, new episode is put a character into the screen so how do we do that the first thing we need is just take um, the texture we want to render into the screen so i'm just going to copy this image from here this one and i'm going to be using it because it's going to teach us how to do two things. One is how to take crop um, an image and just take one part of it. And we're also going to learn how to load the image and render it. So uh, the first thing we need to understand is how SDL works. If you remember, we clear the screen and then we present uh, the screen. So basically, it's a back buffer. So we're drawing off screen and then when we I use the function render present. What we're doing is uh, swapping the bug buffer into the main screen. So that's what the user sees. 
So we would need to here uh, draw our character. Now let me turn this off. Coding makes sense. Okay. So we draw our character here. But to draw our character, we need our character. So basically, we need to load the image. That's why we um, downloaded the SDL3 uh, image uh, header file. What we need to do first is include that. So let me include SDL3 image and then SDL image header file. And now let me just sort this out. Uh, we need to load the image. How do we do that? So here in SDL app init, we're going to be loading it. We are not, uh, and we are not going to do it because it's super bad practice, and you should never do it. We are never going to load our image here. If we load our image here, what we're doing is loading, uh, loading the image every time we render. So that's super, super, super expensive. That's going to cost us uh, many, many, many frames per second. So we never do that. What we do is in our app init function. For now, we are going to sort all of this uh, in a better way in the next episode. But for now, we are going to load the image. And the way we do that is by creating a variable that holds the texture. So to make it easier for this episode, we are going to add it as a global variable too. So that's an L. the type of the texture is SDL texture. We're going to call it layer texture. And over here, we're going to assign it the, the following value. So layer texture equals this new function that we haven't seen before because it's from the SDL image header file. So image load texture. So what does this function do? Load an image from a file system path into a GPU texture. So we're basically loading our image into the GPU so we can later render render it to the screen. So um, yeah, what does this um, function take as arguments? Uh, it takes two arguments. The first one is a render. So we already have that render. And then the second one is a const char. So basically a string with a path to the file we want to be um, loading. So uh, for convenience, I put it, um, I put here my file. So it's as easy as just saying uh, const char file or path. We can just basically just call it path. We're gonna change it later. It's an array of characters. And the name of the array is, uh, sorry, not the name, the value of the string is going to be the path. So since it's on the same folder uh, where we are, we can just say char stripe sheet or PNG. So what we're telling is in the current folder, the file called char sprite sheet PNG. That's the one we want to load. So we would pass this here as the second argument. We're giving the semicolon, so let's do that. And now we have this player texture. This is our texture that we're going to be using. But if we try to compile this, uh, first it's going to give us an error. As you can see here, undefined reference to image load texture. What this means is that when trying to link our program, SDL um, image is not linked. So we simply come into our make file. We oh, copy this, this is here, and we just add image. This is going to link the image library to our program. So now if we try to recompile it, it's going to work. But as you can see, nothing has changed. And that's because we are loading the image, but we are not telling the program to render it anywhere. So if you remember here in our render function, we want to draw our character between the render clear and the render present. So right here, uh, we're going to do that. The way we do that is by using the following function, SDL render texture. What this function does is copy a portion of the texture to the current rendering target as at a pixel precision. So yeah, let's see what the arguments are for this. The first one is a render, we already have that. The second one is a texture, 
we have the two layer texture and then we have the third and fourth one so the third one is an sdl red basically it's a rectangle with float uh, precision and what it does is uh, a pointer to the source rectangle or null for the entire texture what does this mean so here we have our texture and if we pass null to this function we just go null what we're going to do is tell the program okay we want to render all of this the entire texture not uh not a rectangle like from here to here we just want to render the whole thing and then we have the fourth argument that's the destination rectangle this means where we want to draw the rectangle in our uh, screen so if we pass null here what we're telling the app is we want to draw um to draw the image into the whole screen so now if we try to compile it you will see that it does that is um, exactly what we told the program first we don't want um to take a part of the texture we want we want the whole texture and then we also want um, the texture to take the whole screen space so the program is doing what we told it to do but yeah that's not what we usually want to do we don't want to show the entire spreadsheet to the user what we want to do now is just take part of the texture so let's say this rectangle from here and just show this we don't want to show the whole image so how do we do that first we need to define we just we can just take this off first we need to define an f rect variable we're gonna call it um um right frame we can call it and that's gonna be a rectangle so if we go to the definition to the f rect you will see that uh it's four floats the first one is the x position then the y position the width and the height so um if we go to our image here and check the coordinates the coordinates are over here and we want to only take um uh, from say from here to here that would be uh, does it say it here yeah so in the 17x and 14y we have a rectangle of size 15 by 18 so that's those are the dimensions so 17 14 and 15 18 we are gonna go over here and just say 17 14 15 18 or something like that i guess basically what we're telling the program is take only this um part of the image and that's what we are going to render so now if i change here right frame Well, we can just call it the spread portion just to make it more clear portion so come over here and change it and we recompile our program we are getting an error and that's because yeah obviously but uh the render texture takes here is a pointer to a source a source rect so we need to as a pointer instead of um, the entire thing so now what we're rendering yeah we're telling that we only want that part of the texture but as you can see it's drawing it into the, the entire screen so instead of if we want to instead of having to draw to entire screen we just want to have it a certain size we can just do that by using the fourth argument that's going to be a real f right same it's going to be an effect it's going to be um later position we can say it here and maybe we want this to be on the oops we don't want to do that on the x 250 y 250 and then the size um it can be the same as here so that would be 15 18 and now the player if we try to oops what did i do sorry if we just do the same here a pointer to player position 
now the player is being drawn into the position 250 250 and with a size of 15 by 18. so now we have our player and i think that's a whole lot of progress but um we should check one more thing before we continue and that's if you remember here if we pass here null instead of the player position you will see that instead of being pixelated we have some kind of, of smoothing and that's not good if we are doing a pixel art game that's not going to be good so there's uh, one thing that SDL provides called um, set texture scale mode and while uh, this is a function set texture uh, scale mode set the scale mode use it for textures scale operations so this function takes two arguments the first one is a texture and the second one is a scale mode so if we want our textures to scale um linearly instead of uh sorry uh the default mode is linear if we want our texture to use a nearest um neighbor uh, escalation mode we would need to first uh, select our texture so in my case that's um player texture and then we want to say that the scale mode is SDL scale mode nearest so now um this shouldn't be here but i'm just gonna leave it here so for to make it easy now when we uh, do that as you can see here it doesn't get blurry on the edges it's uh just raw pixels so if you're doing a pixel art this is going to come really handy because you don't want your game to look blurry if the idea is you know, making it a pixel art game so for now i'm gonna take this off no i'm just gonna leave it here but what we're going to do now is instead of having this here let's just now the player position oops no, player position we're going to recompile them and we have our player. On the next episode, we're gonna make this player move around. And so I'll see you on the next one.